Well, no, I'm afraid you're going to have to be satisfied with the vote right now. I don't think that uh, that'll ever become a national movement. You know, when I experience public harassment um, around COVID, it's not just about me being Asian, it's also about me being a woman. I pretty much grew up in a sexist household. My dad, he grew up from rural China and he's pretty much uh, this traditional sexist uh, male in China so I grew up listening to him saying well you shouldn't do this you shouldn't do that and even now I'm in the States uh, pursuing my degree and he still talks about well you shouldn't pursue graduate school that's well that's really hard for a girl and you should start thinking about you know, your career and as well as your marriage because you have to prep for, uh, you know, having a kid. Uh, so I think that's, that's pretty much very sexist. I was born and raised in China. In China, the most common sexist judgment I heard from people is that girls cannot be pretty and smart at the same time. But boys can be handsome and intelligent at the same time. In China, um, the inequality between men and women, uh, especially back in the ancient China time, um, families tend to prefer uh, baby boys than baby girls. But I think like, right now, the current time, uh, modern time, people started changing their minds and have a more neutralized thinking on boys and girls. But sexism definitely exists. In 2014, I came to the United States for my high school. Now it's my eighth year. I'm a senior at GW. From my experience now, um, it's kind of the same. Sexism exists everywhere. The situation is better here in the US, but it definitely exists. But people are more um, enthusiastic about fighting for equality between men and women. I'm currently a graduate student at JHU. I also went to high school uh, in upstate New York. I think DC is a relatively liberal city, but not as progressive as where I went to high school. So at GW, I mean, GW is a pretty liberal school. People tend to pursue equality. People tend to pursue a fight for the rights they want. I remember for every freshman at the beginning of the freshman year, we need to complete a sexual education. After I came to DC, I feel that the same bias exists as well as the stereotype the dumb blonde. However, most people I know in DC know that it is an offensive and ignorant thing to say, and no one would estimate a girl's intelligence or ability based on her outlook. I also think DC is very safe for females at least to live in. As far as we know, we had a lot of Asian females especially elderly Asian females being attacked uh, in the last year uh, during the pandemic. I didn't feel threatened living in DC. I think much of the sexism, especially in DC and also in the US, lie in uh, the workplace and in marriage, heterosexual marriage. Uh, so I think people should really tackle the implicit and explicit bias in the workplace. We know females have a hard time climbing the corporate ladder, uh, so I think that's very important. We also see a lot of young females, even though they are educated, but then they are kind of trapped in the marriage, uh, giving birth to uh, children, and then not being able to return uh, to work. So I think that needs to be addressed as well. To improve this, I feel I can speak up to someone when someone says something offensive to me and let them know that I am uncomfortable and uh, offended. 
by their sexist accusation. Based on my personal experience, as long as I pointed out, people would respect my feeling and then think twice next time if they want to say something sexist. So being a Chinese student from a relatively sexism country, I would say as a male in general, I have to raise awareness for myself, uh, being more neutral, being nicer, and thinking positively. I think it will be much better if everyone can do that.